Hello YouTube. So, power creep is not always a bad thing, despite its negative connotation. For instance, Farina was a form of power creep with how she consolidated being both one of the strongest sub DPS and strongest buffers in the game at the same time, while also applying Hydro, the best enabling element, and she does all of that with very high uptime. This elevated the DPS standards for teams in Genshin to much greater heights than before, but it was good power creep because it didn't really power creep any specific character out of the meta, it just elevated the vast majority of teams to a new level. But power creeping characters out of the meta by releasing a stronger character in the same role can also be good power creep. This is good power creep when it is done to characters that have way too low of a power level, for instance, when Chiari released, she power crept Albedo this way, and that was great because Albedo was the only Geo sub DPS, but his damage and kit were just way too bad. He was the best Geo sub DPS, but only because he was the only one. There are quite a few characters like this in the game currently, where they are dominant in a specific role, but only because no new character has come to challenge them there yet. So, I'm going to cover a few of these characters, and how I would design a character to challenge or even power creep them. First off, I have Zhongling. Yep, I'm tired of Zhongling, you're tired of Zhongling, my cat is tired of Zhongling, we're all tired of her. I honestly don't think Zhongling is as great of a character as she's made out to be. She kind of just is good by default, like I said earlier, due to there being no alternatives for our field pyro. Junkling does do good sub DPS damage, but it's not really enough to be better than just using a buffer instead, unless Junkling is being hyper buffed with Bennett, Kasua, and getting vaporized on a lot of her damage. And of course, Junkling has her horrible energy requirements which is especially bad if you need off-field pyro for a non-attack scaling unit, since you're not going to be bringing Bennett to battery her there, which also means she will be doing basically no damage, as she does not do damage without Bennett. And speaking of not using Bennett with Zhongling, Chevra's teams with an Electro DPS like Raiden or Clorand, very often you'll be forced to use Zhongling instead of Bennett, as you do need off-field pyro application to refresh Chevros' resistance shred. And Junkling can do decent sub-DPS damage here since she'll have Chevros' buffs, but it still feels pretty lame, like you'd much rather have another buffer, or at least a sub-DPS that does more damage than Junkling. So, I would like to see a 5-star pyro sub-DPS that doesn't have the awful energy requirements that Junkling has, and allow them to, without Bennett, deal about 20% more damage than what Zhongling does with Bennett. Have them apply Pyro about every 1.5 seconds, so pretty fast, but not quite as fast as Zhongling. It also gives them some decent, but not insane buffing. Something like maybe Vape and Melt damage increased by 15%, and Overload, Borgin, and Burning damage plus 100%. A character like this would make so many teams feel a lot better, in my opinion. Alright, the next character is Bennett. Now, Bennett is undeniably a fantastic character, debatably either the best or second best character in the entire game right now. However, he does still come with a lot of annoying problems, such as his buff only applying to one character. This isn't a problem if your sub DPS can snapshot, but Hoyovos has been designing sub DPS units to not snapshot anymore. Having to stay within Bennett's circle is also pretty annoying for melee DPS units, especially with how the Abyss Chambers lately have been designed to have multi wave, with waves that spawn far away from each other. And also, another thing that's not actually a problem with Bennett himself, but still a problem that HP scaling units, aka Nivellet, tend to be designed with just innately very high scalings compared to attack scalers, so I think attack scaling DPS could really use an extra bit of oomph. How I would design the 5 star Bennett alternative is, make their buff around the same size if not a bit bigger than Bennett, 
let's just say 130% attack, and make it a team-wide buff that lasts like 15 seconds with no circle impact. That might sound way too good, so to prevent this character from just being too strong to exist, I would not give them healing so that Bennett still has that advantage. Also no self pyro application as well. Not applying pyro to you can be a good thing because enemies won't be triggering reactions on you like they do with Bennett, but it can also be a downside to not have that self pyro as it is needed for, for VV vape setups with Kazuha and it also cleanses. I would also make sure that this character actually doesn't have off field pyro application and it doesn't do sub DPS damage so that they aren't stepping on the shoes of the Zhang Link upgrade character from before. So, designed this way, we've got a pretty powerful attack buffer that could be very good upgrade to Bennett for a lot of teams, but also just make an incredible double pyro attack buffing duo alongside Bennett for teams that can fit them both in, which I would love to see. Now, the next character that I would like to see get power crept is Kuki. I'm probably the only creator you're going to hear say this, but Kuki does not have a good kit. In fact, her kit is kinda bad. Aside from mediocre single target healing and slow Electro application that can proc Hyper Bloom, Kuki doesn't do anything at all. She's literally just good by default because there's no alternative to her for teams like Quick Bloom and Hyper Bloom that need her, and her pretty bad kit is holding those teams back. For a better version of Kuki, I would like to see a longer duration, team-wide healing, and some form of buffing and utility. I'd start with a small elemental mastery buff like AD Elemental Mastery, but then something I think would be very good for an Electro Healer is making them a dedicated cooldown reduction character, which we don't have yet. How I would do this is something like this. When the active character with this buff triggers an Electro-related reaction, Decrease the cooldown of their elemental skill and burst by 1.5 seconds. This effect can be triggered once per unique reaction. This would be extremely useful for characters like Sino and Clarand that can get a ton of value out of reducing their skill cooldowns, letting them get some of the value they can get out of Far Peace Thundering Fury, but without actually having to use the set. Alhytham wouldn't really benefit from the cooldown reduction, but he would still get better by the team-wide healing and AD Elemental Mastery. And then the next character for this list that I have is Yunjin. If it wasn't clear from the type of DPS units that I like to play often, spamming a bunch of fast normal attacks is my favorite DPS playstyle in Genshin, so I personally would really like to see a new and improved dedicated normal attack buffer. Not that Yunjin is bad by any means, the buff she provides is around the size of a Bennett buff or slightly less, depending on how well your character can use her C6 and how many of her stacks they can use. But nowadays, dedicated niche buffers tend to provide more buffing than Bennett, for example Zhang Yun or C6 Chevrus or C6 Farazan. Plus, on top of that, Eugene's buff is limited to her 30 stacks, so in AoE, her buff can go out pretty fast. And also, Yunjin is Geo, so she's not providing any value to her teams through her element, unless given Archaic Petra, but that set is scuffed to use. So, here's how I would design a new and improved normal attack buffer. Give 20% attack speed instead of 12%, and give them a good sized buff to all your character's normal attacks based on their attack, similar to the Echo set. And I would have this buff start off small and increase each time you hit opponent with a normal attack, maybe up to like 30 stacks, so like a reverse Yunjin. To make it more clear what I mean, here's how I would word it. Increase all nearby party members attack speed by 20%. Additionally, all party members with this buff have the damage of their normal attacks increased by 30% of their attack. This is increased by an additional 3% each time a normal attack hits up to 30 stacks for a total of 90% atta added attack scaling. That would be such a strong and fun char character, and I really hope we do eventually get something like that. And the last character that I've got that I'd like to see get power crept is Eula. And oh boy, Eula, she's hot. 
yet so, so terrible, she has some of the worst, if not the worst, gameplay of any 5 star DPS unit in the entire game, while also having some of the lowest damage. I know a lot of people attribute this to her being physical, but physical isn't the problem, physical is not actually a bad damage type, it just doesn't have any good characters. How I would personally design a new 5 star physical DPS is, make them a polearm DPS unit with fast normal attacks. I specify polearm because polearm attacks have I believe the least amount of hit lag of melee weapons, so that would be the best for allowing them to benefit from attack speed. And benefiting from attack speed is very important for a new physical DPS, since Mika, the dedicated niche physical buffer, has a lot of his power budget put into attack speed. Part of the reason Mika is not actually that great for other physical DPS is, they are all literally claimer users and barely benefit from attack speed at all. And then, I'd make sure their gameplay is basically like those meme teams that use Zhongli on Crescent Pike as a physical DPS, so give this character fast normal attacks with a ton of multi-hits, and make their attacks way flashier and more fun and cool to use than Zhongli's, while also making their signature weapon a 5 star, much stronger version of Crescent Pike. A character like that would be so cool and so much fun, that I would definitely add them to the roster of DPS units that I main. But, those are the main characters that I would personally like to see get power crept in the near future, ideally in Natlan. If there are any characters that you think I missed, or if you just have any comments on anything I said in this video at all, please be sure to give a, a comment down below letting me know. And also, if you liked the video, please don't forget to give the video a like, and also subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks, and goodbye.